Hey, what's up guys, Paulo Munoz here and welcome to this very short video tutorial on how to create custom alphas from custom brushes inside ZBrush. Let's go ahead and jump straight into it. All right, so here we are inside ZBrush and I'm using a custom UI. And this video comes in response to some of the questions that I got after I released my recent pack of brushes and resources for ZBrush called the Geiger and Beksinski Tribute Brushes Pack. So let me just bring that one here. So this is a pack that I released uh, a few weeks ago and essentially is to give you the ability to create a very creepy and interesting set of patterns um, inside ZBrush. So this is the type of things and brushes that come with the pack. And I got a few questions that relate to the brushes pack and how to create this type of brushes or, you know, alphas from these brushes. So that's what this video is all about. I'm just going to show you a very simple technique using some of the brushes from this pack, obviously, but you can follow along with this tutorial uh, even if you don't have this pack. So you can have, you know, any other type of brushes or even the, the standard brushes from ZBrush and you should be able to, uh, to follow along. So the idea is that if I have a set of custom brushes, so these are the brushes that come with that pack, but again, it could be any type of brush, any type of custom brush. And I'm just gonna go ahead and double click on that one. It's just one of my favorites. And if I go ahead and do this, I get this type of effect. Um, let me just subdivide this one more time so you can see better the, the result. So I can just do this type of things and maybe go with a smooth brush, right? And I will get something like that. And obviously this brush is using a custom alpha and a set of different settings inside ZBrush to achieve this result, right? The same thing goes for any other brush that I use from the pack, right? It has a bunch of different effects. Cool. So that's the type of uh, patterns that you can get very easily using these brushes. So the idea is that you can use these custom brushes to create your own custom alphas and therefore expand your uh, library of assets. So let's go ahead and start with the tutorial. I'm going to go ahead and click on the tool palette and I'm going to click on a plain 3D and I'm going to use this as a base to create that alpha. I'm going to turn off the floor off, make sure this is a polymesh 3D so that we can actually deform it and obviously we don't have enough resolution so i'm going to go ahead and jump to the geometry sub palette go to the subdivide or the divide button and turn off the subdivide smooth modifier so this is um, important in this first step just so that when we subdivide it we don't get these rounded corners here so if i just go ahead and do divide once you'll see this plane has these rounded corners and when we extract the alpha uh, this might be an issue so let's just undo that turn this off and divide a few times so i'm going to go for Let's go for 4 million polygons. That's going to be plenty of resolution uh, to create interesting details. In fact, let's just go back to 1 million. And if anything, we just subdivide it again. Um, and that's it. Let's go ahead and start adding some details, right? So I have this custom brush from the Geiger and Beksinski pack. And I'm going to start doing something like that. And the good thing about this brush is that it sort of respects a little bit of the, uh, I would say, the, the depth of the details. So even if I go over certain areas, it's just going to override them a little bit and it's not going to destroy the, the previous detail as much. All right, so this is kind of like, I don't know exactly what this could be, but maybe maybe the pectoral <laughs> of a creature or something like that. And then um, once I finish with this, that's it. That's all we have to do. We can obviously go back and uh, use another brush. So for instance, the Smooth Picks is a pretty good one. So Smooth Picks. And I can hold the shift key. And I really like this brush just because it sort of respects the, the crevices and the deep ends of the effect of the previous brush. So all I'm doing is just refine this a tiny bit with the, with the smooth brush. Uh, and that's it. There's no need to go higher than, you know, higher than 1 million polygons. Um, but once you, as you can see, this is a very simple and very easy thing to do. Once you're happy with this, uh, what we can do is just turn off perspective just so we can hold the shift key as we rotate and it would snap to, or the camera will snap to this front view and there's no like rotation or anything. And that's kind of like an important part of the next step. So let's go ahead and do the same thing again, rotate, hold shift. So it snaps to the front and I'm gonna switch to a standard brush. So let's filter by the letter S, select standard. And if you don't wanna replace the, the settings of the current standard brush that you have in ZBrush, you can clone this. So you can go to the brush palette, click on clone, and now we have a, a clone version of this standard brush that has an underscore one in the name, right? And yeah, basically we can now convert this into an alpha that is going to live in the standard brush. So to do that, we can go to the alpha palette. Let me just dock that to the left-hand side. And I'm gonna go ahead and click on from mesh. 
and that's going to bring this palette, right? So this is um, a pretty cool, easy way to adjust the alphas. If you actually click around in this area, you can actually rotate it and change the alpha. So that's why I say in the beginning, it's kind of like important to have this in a front view, but you can do the same thing here. You can start rotating and hold the shift key to snap there. And you can navigate this window the same way that you navigate in Zbrush. The important part on, on this um, alpha that we're going to create is that we don't want to have any empty or black spaces around. So I'm going to go ahead and try to, let's go ahead and click frame just to make it easier and just go a little bit closer. So this is kind of like refining the, the placement of that alpha. And also you can change the size of the map. So I'm going to go for... 248 so it's pretty pretty big and that way we can have lots of resolution in that map that's it that's all we have to do now we can click ok and series is going to take that sculpted details in this plane and it's going to convert it into an alpha right so this is the alpha right here and this is the the standard brush obviously so let's go ahead and go back to the sphere undo that and let's go ahead and do this and as you can see we are applying that alpha but in this case, I want to change a few things to make this obviously <laughs> a bit more useful than what it currently is. I mean, you could probably change a few things in the stroke palette and create kind of like a skin base already. But um, <laughs> the point of this tutorial is something else. So let's go ahead and undo that. And let's dock the stroke palette on the right hand side. And I'm going to go ahead and select the drag rect. So I'm going to click on that. And this one allows you to click and drag, obviously, and literally drag that effect, which is great. Um, another thing that we might want to do is increase the intensity of the brush. So I'm going to right click to access this quick palette and increase the intensity, something like 100, just to see what that gives us. And this obviously gives us the, the full effect of that you know, pattern that we created. Now, you might also notice that there is kind of like a fading towards the edges of the alpha. Uh, you can control that with the, let me undo that, with the um, uh, focal shift. So if I reduce that focal shift in my standard brush, click and drag, you will be able to see more of that, right? So this is a, a great way to customize your alphas. I do like to have a little bit of the, the fading from the focal shift, um, and that's just purely so that I can do this multiple times and it would blend a lot better, the details, right? You see, this is pretty, pretty easy, um, and it looks pretty interesting. Now, another thing is if I open the Modify palette, if I click and drag again, you'll see I'm going to rotate. There's quite a bit of change in the depth just with this alpha and sometimes you know this effect could be very very strong so one thing you can do if you already have some details in your model you need to go to the modify tab click on surface and enabling the surface will give you the mid value of that alpha so the alpha is just an image that is uh, a black and white image the, the black or the darkest points are going to be the ones that are more embedded in the in the scope and the widest points are the the highest peaks of the effect right so that middle point would be kind of like the mid-grade, something, something in the middle. That means that when you click and drag, um, it looks very similar, but it's not going to distort the, the silhouette of the, of, or the contour of the sculpture as much. So just keep that in mind. You can basically turn this on and off depending on what you want to achieve. Uh, but that's pretty much it. You now have a custom alpha created very, very quickly from a custom brush. And just to wrap up this quick tutorial, I'm going to go ahead and load a tool, something like this demo head, right? Uh, or actually, let's go ahead and load Nick Sucrello's character. I'm going to go to the layers. I'm going to bake all, go into solo mode, and I'm going to subdivide this a few times. Again, about 2.2 million so that we have enough resolution. Uh, obviously, I haven't gone through the process of setting up the, the secondary forms, but uh, with this alpha and symmetry, I can just go ahead and start doing this and, you know, define the... The character a little bit or like the details of the character already it could become like a like a lizard creature or something um of course i did certain lines a bit intentional uh, just to sort of convey a bit of the directionality of that alpha so i might not use the same alpha everywhere else i might just go back to something like this plane right and create a different type of pattern following certain you know different lines or create a, just a, a series of different alphas that I can use across all the models, right? But you can just also change the intensity and that way you can have more control over the, the, yeah, the intensity of the details really. But as you can see, this is a pretty simple thing to do. Um, once you have the 
custom brushes or once you have a custom brush, you can go ahead and create multiple alphas, right? And like I said, you can go back to your to your original base mesh where you created the alpha and let's actually go back and undo, right? And using the alpha and the brush that you created from the previous alpha, you can go ahead and click and drag and create something else. So for instance, I can go ahead and do something like that. So now I have this other alpha that I can go to the alpha palette and I can go ahead and click on from mesh and just rotate around, place them properly, maybe get a little bit closer like that, make the map 2048, click OK. And now the standard brush is using that alpha, right? The new one. So again, if we come back to this guy, we now have a, a very different effect. But again, it's, it's something that it creates lots of details very, very quickly. Now, although this looks very detailed, thanks to the alpha and the brush that we applied, this is not how I would go ahead and add details because I don't have you know the secondary forms established and, and anything like that. So this is a pretty plain, you know, pretty plain surface. So I would have to go ahead and define some of the, the forms a little bit better before I go into details. But I just wanted to give you um, a hint and an, an idea of how you can utilize custom brushes to produce custom alphas in a very, very quick way. And you can build up a whole library of these um, alphas or custom alphas that you create yourself from other custom brushes. All right, so that's it for this quick tutorial. Hopefully you have found this uh, quick tip useful and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.